it's just a lot of fun to see that extra capability around here, to see us talking about teraflops and petaflops, and, and to know that we've got the brain power to make the best of this tool. So congratulations to Craig, congratulations to the University of Alaska for bringing fish to this campus. While most people try to take fish out of Alaska, we're proud to be part of a group that put a fish into Alaska. So this is going to help me know where to go fish? <laughs> <laughs> if it's that super, then I'm all in. We have a two cabinet machine that in theoretical flops in compute capacity is greater than all those rows of machines over there. And this is you know, basically one generation beyond. As Alaska's research university, UAF must continue to provide the best tools. ARSC is one of the most important tools that we have available. And as we close on 100 years in our existence, we know that what has made us successful is the ability to attract and retain top-notch faculty. The Cray supercomputer was procured with 1,152 Opteron processor cores, as well as 48 GPU devices. This utilizes the Gemini interconnect for high-speed communication. It is connected to the external Lustre file system that ARSC utilizes for center-wide high-performance parallel processing. The university uses its computational power consistently to model really complex systems. Living systems, integrated ecosystems are immensely difficult and complex things. And we're really proud of the work the university does to try to understand those systems better. Those systems in the Arctic have a lot more complexity in the rates of change we're seeing in those systems. So whether we're modeling changes in weather, downscaling global climate models to affect the regional models looking at sea ice and sea ice variations, looking at species changes, looking at the human interactions and human risks, whether it be earthquakes, volcanoes, volcanic ash, tsunamis. We're using supercomputing capacity. When we were looking at competing offers from different vendors for supercomputers, one of the things that we had decided earlier on was to look at the GPUs and to look at the acceleration and the multi-core. And what we found to be Cray's distinguishing feature was the software ecosystem that was provided as part of the GPUs and of course also the general compiler environment, debugging environment, workload management, and so forth. And only then, with this massive data that's going to be coming in, are we going to be able at some point in the future to maybe use modeling to figure out what's really going on and what really are the implications for policymakers and, and life itself as, as we know it. We have been working on ways to make sure we have a powerhouse university and one of them is to make sure the university has the tools, the investment in laboratories, the investment in the pipeline of people and certainly the computing capability, the communications capability to do its job of research as well as education. I've told my kids you don't really want to go to a university that isn't also trying to be on the cutting edge of research because when you're learning from people who are learning themselves, you're just learning that much more closely to the frontier. And that's what Alaska needs. The point we made this morning to the commission was, when the budgets are cut, don't think of this as an expense. Think of this as, as a real investment and, and focus those important dollars that are left because we in turn are the only ones that have the ability to provide the proof that certain things may in fact mitigate or be able to adapt. And right now it's all speculation. And with equipment like this, we can go in and change that from speculation to data-supported research and provide answers. Someone dies at spawning, but that's not the end of their life. That's the idea I came up with. Like uh, their bodies, like uh, nourish the forest and uh, eventually nourish the the baby salmon, like her descendants. So, or maybe I can make her like a circle of life of salmon. And uh, then I came up with the idea of kind of flowing and coming back in an endless circle. We will need to continually redefine what we mean by high performance computing. Because what it is today is not what it will be in five years and in 10 years. And so, as noted earlier, the life cycle, um, we will need to make sure that we're continually renewing this. And I think UAF 
and UA are committed to doing so. We really appreciate the long-term partnership with Cray that's, that's allowed us to keep, to keep growing. Mm -hmm.